So we finally come to one of the biggest questions in carpentry and woodworking. New DIYers always want to know, what are the pros and cons of jigsaws and circular saws, and which one should I buy if I have to get one? This is a pretty complex discussion. If you watched my Just Two Power Tools video, then you know that I'm very circular saw oriented. But the debate doesn't end right there. Both of these tools are indispensable. It just comes down to who is using them and what they're primarily using them for. So today I'm gonna to do one of my deep dive discussions. A full comparison of jigsaws and circular saws, tackling everything from overall function to weight and control, safety issues, preferred applications, and even price. So get ready for that. But real quick, before we start, I wanted to let you know about a new thing I've got going on these days. In addition to being a carpenter and a YouTuber, I also recently became an author. Just last month, I published these, the Dungeon World books, a funny, fast-paced fantasy series for kids ages seven to 10. This is just something else I do, I write. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved to read and write, and that love really came from reading books like this. The Dungeon World books are packed with jokes and gags, the stories fly right along, and they contain a lot of good messages about personal responsibility and sticking up for your friends. With illustrations by the brilliant Michelle Nobles, I feel like they're the perfect warm-up books for reluctant readers, fantasy lovers, and parents who just want to share a great story with their kids. If you've ever wanted to support the channel before, this is really the best way to do it. I've never taken a sponsor before, I've never even set up a Patreon. Instead, I've always wanted to offer people something of value. So I hope you'll consider hopping over to Amazon and grabbing some Dungeon World books now or after the video. Links are below in the description and they're available in both paperback and ebook. You can give them to your kids or grandkids or niece and nephew, and it'll give them something to read while you're tackling DIY projects. All right, that's my big announcement. With all that said, let's get on with today's video. So, circular saws and jigsaws. They're kind of in different worlds. They both cut wood and other materials, but they do it in completely different fashions. Circular saws, of course, use a backward spinning circular blade to cut wood in a very linear way, while jigsaws use a plunging stroke and skinny blades to cut in more freeform patterns. New DIYers tend to gravitate towards jigsaws over circular saws, and there's a really simple reason for this. Circular saws are scary. That's the crux of it. Circular saws just scare people. And it makes sense. You basically have a portable table saw miter saw in your hand, and it's allowed to go wherever it wants. Everything from the weight to the blade action and even the sound it makes induces fear in newcomers. Jigsaws, on the other hand, seem far more manageable. They were literally first inspired by sewing machines, and their action just seems less intimidating. They're easier to understand and not as scary to use. So when people ask me if I think they should get a circular saw, what they're really asking is, do I have to get a circular saw? Can I please, please just stick with jigsaws? Bottom line, I do not like forcing people to get tools that they're not comfortable with. And there's a really good chance that any given person might not actually need a circular saw. So what I wanna to try to do here is give a clear-eyed discussion about the differences between jigsaws and circular saws. In that way, you can ultimately decide which one's the best for you. So to begin, let's look at a head-to-head -head statistical comparison, just the facts. The most obvious place to start is size. Circular saws are a lot bigger and a lot heavier. Jigsaws weigh in at about five or six pounds, a perfect one-handed tool. But my Makita magnesium circular saw weighs over 10 pounds. You can hold it with one hand, but it's constantly trying to pull you to the floor. And most of this is motor weight. Circular saws generally have 15 amp motors. That's literally the same size motor that's in your stationary table saw or miter saw. But here you're carrying all that around on a handle. Jigsaws on the other hand have three to eight amp motors with most falling in the five amp range. That's one third of your circular saw amperage and it translates to about half the weight. Now the wattage draw of the two tools is actually pretty similar at startup. That's 1800 watts for a jigsaw startup and about 2400 watts for a circular saw startup. But that spread widens over prolonged usage because jigsaws have a running wattage of just above 700, but circular saws have a running wattage of like 1200 plus. So that's nearly double the draw while circular saws are in progress. When it comes down to it, these things are just expending more energy. And what that excessive power translates into is cutting speed, especially through thicker materials. Here's where we get into the discussion of applications. 
I don't like to make a lot of generalizations, but it's gonna kind of help for this discussion. So here we go. Circular saws are basically a cutting beast, while jigsaws are more of a finesse tool. I come from the carpentry world, and in carpentry, we cut a lot of wood and we build big structures. Just the sheer volume of lumber in houses and the compressed schedules in which we have to build them requires that we're able to cut a lot of lumber quickly. Also, houses and outdoor structures are really vast and dispersed, so we need something that not only cuts with power, but can also get around from place to place. There's absolutely no substitute for circular saws on carpentry or construction job sites. Much of what we're building with is two by material. So we're cutting boards that range in width from three and a half inch two by fours to 24 inch LVLs. And we're cutting like miles of three quarter ply material that clads the house. On top of this, almost all these cuts are completely linear. We're trying to cut in perfectly straight lines so we can make tight 90 degree butt joints. The circular saw is 100% designed for this type of cutting. I discussed this a lot in my cutting video, but the long linear nature of the blade, its depth in the material, and even the way it spins, makes it want to stay on a fixed course going straight. These things really are not designed to cut curves at all. If you want to do that, you have to introduce a jigsaw. These tools are much more versatile in the profiles that they can cut. As I said, the blades are skinny and they plunge, so they're designed to navigate a wandering course. Anytime you need to cut shapes or curves in a material, this is the saw to reach for. I cut these cloud lifts in a prayer cabinet for a client once. Notice that the crest is a negative match for the skirt below. This is because I cut them both simultaneously with just like two long jigsaw cuts. That's pretty fine work, and the super skinny curve of jigsaw blades makes this possible, along with their ability to make tight turns when you're using a scroll type blade on the right setting. So for woodworkers and craft type projects, Jigsaws are really more indispensable than circular saws. And they're also perfectly capable of making long straight cuts on their own. They actually follow a line pretty well freehand, and you can also use them with straight edge guides, just like a circular saw. It takes longer to make these cuts, and I don't think that the cut is quite as clean as a circular saw cut, but they're still useful for that application. So they can hold their own for straight line cutting as well. Okay, moving on from there, you start to get into more overlap and functionality between the two. For instance, both tools bevel. This means that the blade tilts in relation to the sole plate so you can create cuts with a beveled edge. I prefer to do this with a circular saw because again, it's faster. Also, I have to shift my sole plate on the jigsaw with the screwdriver because it's a budget model and that's tedious. But the jigsaw will cut a really clean bevel if used correctly and other models tilt much faster than mine. Also, both tools can make plunge cuts. That's a cut that doesn't start at the edge of a piece, but begins in the field of the material. I'll do detailed videos on plunging later, but both saws can effectively make plunge cuts, and it's not that hard with a little practice. You just need some arm strength and a good stable position. Next, we come to the topic of material thickness. How deep can they cut? And this is where things get sort of ironic, because you would think that circular saws would have a bigger cut capacity because it's a bigger tool. But strangely enough, that's wrong. Most circular saws have seven and a quarter inch blades, so their effective cut depth is about two and a half inches. And most jigsaw blades only have a stroke depth of about one and three quarter inches, which is plenty for plywood and thinner lumbers, but barely enough to cut two by. However, there are actually much longer custom jigsaw blades on the market. Both six inch and nine inch blades are fairly common. These can get all the way through four by material and even thicker stuff. You need a beefier jigsaw to do this, preferably something in the 7 amp range, but they'll cut scrolls and thicker wood even if they have to do it slowly and they generate a lot of heat in the process. So that's an advantage for jigsaws, but they lose some ground when you consider some other cut depth requirements. For instance, partial depth cuts. This is where you want to make a cut that only passes partway through your stock. Jigsaws are nearly useless here because they can't make partial depth cuts. Their plunging nature really means that their full stroke wants to pass through the stock and come out the back. There's almost no functional way to do like a half inch deep pass. On the other hand, I can easily set up my circular saw to make the shallowest cut imaginable. The depth adjustment is so fine that they're really perfect for cutting grooves, dados, and slots. The saw blade just glides through. This is extremely useful in joinery applications where you're bringing boards together and penetrating joints. So that's a plus for circular saws. And for material types you can cut, you have some more overlap between the tools. Circular saws really just used to be for wood and composites. 
But now there are a slew of blade options that let you cut everything from cement fiber to ceramics and even metal. The blades are easy to find, but I'll admit that I don't personally use them for that very much. Cement dust gums up your saw, and I've always just been shy about cutting metal with this huge freehand motor. For a circular saw, I stick to wood, composites, and PVC, and I'm not swapping blades a ton. But jigsaws also have a variety of blades that are easy to change and can tackle diverse materials, especially plastics and metals. For light gauge steel or non-ferrous metals like aluminum, I like jigsaws for their gentle control. It's just the right motor size and you can cut more freely with less power. Really, you can just cut all sorts of stuff with jigsaws and you can also control your cut speed. Circular saws pretty much only run at full bore. You pull that trigger, it's immediately trying to hit its top speed and stay there. There's no in between. But jigsaws are really more like drills. They have pressure sensitive triggers and some models even come with variable speed settings. This gives you way more control as you approach different materials and cuts, and that gives new DIYers a lot more comfort and confidence. If you want to make a long cut with a jigsaw, you can just rev to max speed and pin it there with these switch buttons. These hold the power feed so you can release the trigger and just focus on cutting. It's another real advantage over circular saws. Now let's talk a bit about safety. Which saw is more dangerous? I've made a really big deal in the past about how dangerous circular saws can be, and I stand by that. But I think it's foolish to overlook how dangerous jigsaws are, especially since people underestimate them more. Probably the biggest issue here is blade guards. Circular saw blades are covered at almost all times. These snapback guards are designed to keep the blade teeth enclosed, except when you're right in the middle of a cut and then just the bottom of the blade is exposed. With jigsaws, on the other hand, the blade is always exposed. There is no guard for jigsaw blades. The best you have are these fenders that are designed to keep your fingers off the front, but even those are sort of token safety features because the running blade itself just jabs the air violently beneath the shoe. So it's like a tiny reciprocating saw that's gonna perforate anything it touches. And people get themselves in the most trouble with this during draw out. This is where your cut is finished and you're drawing the tool free. Two things can go wrong here. The first is when you draw straight out of a plunge cut and the blade punches your material. This is really easy to do if you're impatient and it'll bend your blade, mess up your wood stock, or punch your hand if it's too close. But just as bad is when you back the jigsaw out towards you while it's still running. And this is something people do all the time. If you let this thing get near your body while it's still plunging, you're going to get several puncture wounds very fast before you even think about it. And they're probably going to be in the leg to abdomen region. And that's not fun. You have to let jigsaws wind down completely before you back them out. But people are impatient and they just don't do this enough. And since these tools don't have blade guards, that can be very dangerous. Yes, circular saws can kick even more violently back towards the operator. And I've talked about this extensively in other videos, but these guards snap back very effectively. And that makes all the difference during operator mistakes or general usage. So while jigsaws produce fewer serious injuries overall, like cutting things off, I think it's just as easy or easier to harm yourself or your project with one because of the exposed blades and also because of the lack of concern that people bring to this tool. So that's safety. And now real quickly, let's talk about the issue of price. Overall, these tools are actually pretty comparable. Yes, you will see more cheap, lower end jigsaws on the market, but their high end is similar to circular saw high end. And these days you're seeing even more really affordable circular saws with crazy good ratings. So prices are really just all over the board for both of these tools. I think with enough looking, everybody's gonna find something decent that fits their budget. So price doesn't factor as much into my recommendation here. It's just a buyer's market for power tools these days. All right, that brings us to the final assessment. Which tool should you buy for your projects? Do I think you should absolutely have a circular saw? Or can you get away with just owning a jigsaw? Here's how I'm going to handle this recommendation. It really all comes down to total volume of usage. Consider the projects that you're going to be tackling in the next year or two. Are you planning a lot of large scale housework? Are you building decks, gates, and fences? Are you building a shutout back or framing new walls in your basement? If those are your types of projects, then do yourself a favor.